A new generation of Volkswagen Golf is never anything less than a very, very big deal. And yet with the recent introduction of the Pure Electric ID3, all of a sudden, no longer is the world's best-selling hatchback the favourite child at Wolfsburg. Naturally, this hasn't stopped Volkswagen claiming the Mark 8 version is the best Golf they've ever built. There's a barrage of new cabin technologies, a range of mild hybrid engines, and while the dimensions have grown a touch, the MQB platform has been stiffened up and there's some trick interplay between the chassis electronics and the hydraulic dampers. But is it actually fun to drive? Volkswagen's engineers have been very clever actually and in a first for any of the group brands they've managed to mate the ESP system with the programming of the hydraulic dampers. So every time you turn into a corner what's actually happening is the damping force on the outside of the car is increasing and on the inside of the car it's dropping off a little bit and that's just helping to rotate the car through bends a little bit more cleanly and you don't actually have to be driving on the limit either to experience that because it's working from just 0.1 g so every little change in direction that system's working the golf changes direction very cleanly the steering is very precise it's an easy car to drive fast. Well, the last few generations of the Golf have done so well, and what this car does equally well is just match the control weights in such easy-going fashion. So the steering, the brake calibration, the throttle, it's all just so, and it speaks to engineering that is undertaken by people who really do sweat the details. It's not the most lively or engaging car to drive, but I think your everyday driver who let's not forget is the one the Golf is aimed squarely at. There's not many cars that are this easy to drive. They managed to quicken the steering off centre to give the car a little bit more agility but it doesn't feel remotely nervous. This car's running the new variable ratio and it's really well judged actually. I think for something like the GTI we'd probably prefer the fixed ratio. It's just that bit more transparent I think when you're really pushing on but for just flowing the car down the road and everyday use, this is probably worth having. You can really feel that damping control with the ESC working hard, actually. It's genuinely convincing at times. I don't know. It's a surprisingly enjoyable steer, actually, for a Golf. One of the things about the last generation Golf is that the normal versions were, were very well set up and very well balanced, but they weren't exciting to drive. And I think. This car may be a touch on the firm side in terms of the way it rides over potholes and corrugations in the road, but they've definitely put a little bit more energy into the driving experience. We're driving the 1.5 litre TSI petrol, which is available with either 130 or 150 horsepower. It pulls cleanly and is probably the engine to have, but it's just one small part of what Volkswagen is describing as the broadest engine lineup in the class. There's a smaller, one litre three cylinder, but both engines are also available as 48 volt mild hybrids for better fuel economy and a bit of torque fill during acceleration. There's also a new two litre turbo diesel said to be exceptionally clean, plus a 240 horsepower GTE plug-in hybrid before the GTI arrives next year. The important thing to remember is that anything with 150 horsepower or above gets the more sophisticated independent rear suspension, whereas everything else gets a twist beam. One of the other good things about this new Golf is the cabin ergonomics, and that's no surprise. Visually, in terms of feel, premiumness, maturity, I think this cabin really ticks the boxes actually. And they've actually borrowed some of the ideas we've seen in the latest Porsche 911. So the screens are mounted quite high up near to the eye line. There's just a stubby little gear selector down here, but not much else. Just the parking brake and the engine start button. And then everything else is touch sensitive. So the climate controls, the driving assistance controls, so that's your lane keeping. Your mode switch, so through comfort, normal and sport. Everything else is up here on a neat little plate just below the vents. You have to say the new Innovision cockpit is pretty special, with the crisp digital displays fanning out just below the driver's eye line and, to these hands, the nicest steering wheel in the class. Still, Volkswagen's decision to throw out almost all of the physical knobs and dials has made this a less intuitive place, which is something even the expensive plastics and built-in Amazon Alexa can't fix. If you compare this cabin with that of a Focus, it's night and day. It really is. There's just a level of maturity here that 
admittedly, the Golf's always been well known for, but they've really knocked it up a notch here. Volkswagen's strategy with the Golf has always been to incrementally improve anything that worked well in the previous generation and swap out anything that didn't. And this has got to be one of the best cabins in terms of ergonomics in the class. There's loads of adjustability in the steering column. You also get a lot of adjustability in these ergo seats. They're very comfortable, it's good visibility. It's a very easy car to place and that bodes well for the GTI, which of course is gonna arrive next year. So would I buy the new Golf instead of say, a really well-equipped Ford Focus or the new BMW 1 Series. I'm not sure. I think the BMW, as you would expect, offers quite a lot more in the driving department. I think we're going to front-wheel drive has actually been executed really well in that car. And the same applies to the Focus, actually, which ultimately is a more supple, engaging car to drive than this. Prices for the Mark 8 Golf are still TBC but are expected to start from around £20,000 for the basic 90 horsepower 1 litre TSI. Don't expect more powerful versions to be quite so affordable. So would you have one of these over the new re-engineered BMW 1 series? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to the Autocar YouTube channel.